Okay, we come to the final talk before lunch. It's hijacking mobile data connections 2.0. Uh, Roberto Picarillo, Roberto Garcia. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to the talk. Okay, thank you. Hello to everybody. Uh, I'm Roberto Vicillo from, from Mobile Security Lab. Thanks for being, being here today. And thanks for uh, Alberto Caporro, who is here today, and uh, Christopher Romune, who is not here today. <laughs> I'm going to present our work on hijacking mobile data connection uh, version 2 with automated data improvement. So, a small summary. The um, difference between uh, the first version presented in the last black hat uh, and um, the second version. Next, a, a few words on uh, provisioning process. Next, a warp architecture uh, primary concept. Next, we will try to forge a provisioning message. After that, my colleague Roberto will continue with the uh, provisioning process and the security issues noticed in this process. After that, we will propose an attack scenario and uh, we will show how it's possible to exploit uh, these security issues noticed previously. We will end the, um, our presentation with, uh, Oops. So, <laughs> Sorry. with a real demonstration of uh, our uh, attack scenario. So in the first work uh, version one, we did the remote configuration of devices by SMS using uh, home approvisioning protocol. We uh, did the DNS subverting on certain mobile devices, a DNS fix server in order to respond to uh, the client's request. And next, uh, we did a transparent pro proxy using uh, Apache uh, using uh, with mode security in order to perform a traffic inspection. Today, we would like to take a few extra steps on uh, previous work in automated attacks and uh, sneak attacks with a clever security mechanism. Uh, we will build a general malicious configuration valid for most devices and uh, we will uh, deal with uh, SSL connection. So, why is the provisioning process uh, necessary? Because uh, mobile equipment uh, must be configured to interoperate with uh, mobile infrastructure and services. According to standard documentation, the provisioning, pro provisioning is the process by which a client is configured with uh, a minimum user interaction. And uh, this process is performed using uh, warp architecture capabilities and normally it's uh, used by mobile operator. So, some words on uh, web architecture. The first sentence is uh, a standard documentation, and uh, which uh, th there are a lot of applications that uh, use uh, web architecture, for example, MMS application or web browsing, as in our case, a provisioning process, and uh, social network application, for such as uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter and other applications such as Skype, MSN, and so on. WAP architecture provides a communication protocol framework. In this uh, framework, there are uh, two kind of uh, communication models. The first one is the pool model, in which the clients send uh, requests to the server, and then the server um, send uh, data to the client. In the second one, push model, the server send data to the, uh, to the client without uh, client's request. The second one is um, important in the mobile environment because it's used to send unsolicited data from the server to the client. So this is a picture of uh, protocol framework. Uh, it's, uh, consists of, uh, it's divided in uh, um, layers. Uh, the free application, session, transfer, uh, transport, uh, beer. Now we will try to forge a provisioning message according to this uh, protocol framework. And we will see which of these layers is involved in this uh, process. So, 
The first part of uh, provisioning message is a provisioning document in the application layer. And um, a provisioning document provides parameters related to, for example, a new network access point, for example, application specific configuration. Is used, uh, is, is used uh, um, uh, from mobile operator, for example, to, um, to provide the configuration to new customer, or for example, to reconfigure uh, misconfigured uh, mobile phones, or for example, to enable new services. The important thing is that um, um, each provisioning document is encoded always in WB XML document. This is an example uh, of a translation uh, from XML document in XML language in uh, WBXML encoding. The first part of the slide showed uh, a new configuration for the new network access point, in this case with uh, name DeepSec, with, uh, for example, NAP address uh, apn.deepsec.com. Um, for beer, GSM, GPRS. In the second part, uh, there is a, um, a, uh, the WBXML encoding of XML document. This, uh, this encoding is uh, it's, um, it's necessary because uh, the communication is more efficient. The next layer involved in this uh, process is uh, the session service with uh, W session protocol that provides uh, connection services uh, push. Uh, when we want to, to send a provisioning message, uh, we have to specify the media type uh, application slash wendy.web.connectivity wbxml. In this, um, in this header, we can add the um, security, inf uh, security information, for example, SEC parameter to specify security mechanism, or for example, security mechanism related information. Some words on secure obje objectives. Uh, message authentication protects from accepting malicious messages from untrusted sources. And messages with uh, no authentication may be discarded. Security mechanisms are based on the HMAC uh, calculation in order to preserve sender authentication and document integrity. Security mechanism used is uh, typically based on uh, shared secret there are uh, several kinds of shared secrets. For example, the first one is a user pin uh, used in the, um, in the last uh, work, in, uh, in the last uh, presentation presented in the black hat. This is a, a, a numeric pin code chosen by the sender. In the second case, a network pin uh, that will, uh, will, be used, uh, will be used today is uh, the IMSI Information International Mobile Subscribe Identity. And uh, the last one is a uh, user network pin, an hybrid approach uh, between user pin and network pin. This is a flowchart of each uh, MAC uh, calculation. Uh, takes uh, two parameters. The first one is the key, uh, in this case, network pin represented by uh, IMSI. And the second parameter uh, will be the provisioning document encoded uh, in WBXML. A few words uh, on uh, IMSI, it's an international mobile subscribe identity and uh, uniquely identifies a mobile user. Uh, it's uh, permanently stored on the SIM card and uh, HLR uh, is a mobile operator database that stores the page MSISDN MSI is associated to, uh, with uh, a MSISDN and uh, it's used during the subscriber authentication procedure. But the important thing is that uh, this information should be uh, regarded as a confidential piece of information. Uh, IMSI consists of uh, 15 uh, digits. The first three digits is a mobile country code, uh, uniquely identifies the uh, home country of the mobile subscriber. The next two digits uh, um, mobile network code is uh, of uh, three digits or two digits, uh, depending on uh, we are in USA, for example, with uh, three digits, or uh, we are in Europe with uh, two digits. 
and um, identifies the public land mobile network of a mobile subscriber. The remaining uh, digits uh, uh, is uh, the mobile subscriber identification number. It identifies the mobile uh, user to the public uh, land mobile network. Uh, next, uh, we will see how it's possible to use uh, this information in the second part of the uh, presentation. As, as I have said before, uh, IMSI should be a confidential information, but uh, there are uh, a lot of websites that offer uh, very cheap M MSI lookup services. In our case, we have spent uh, two cents for each MSI lookup. This is an example. We provide the, uh, the MSI SDN and the uh, services uh, on web uh, retrieve the IM IMSI uh, via mail or via HTT post. But uh, before uh, we can use uh, this information as a security mechanism in order to, do, to forge a, um, a provisioning message for uh, using uh, each MAC calculation, um, uh, we have to manipulate uh, the IMSI uh, we had the control nibble uh, nine digits in front of uh, IMSI, and uh, we will have uh, a 16 uh, digits. After that, uh, we can select these, uh, these digits uh, in pairs of uh, two digits, and uh, we can use the semi-octet representation, um, inverting the digits inside each pair. Uh, from IMCI. After that, we are ready to use um, new IMCI information as a HMAC calculation uh, is the first parameter. The second one is the, is, uh, the WBXML provisioning document uh, built before. Uh, some words on WSP primitive push is used for sending uh, unsolicited information from the server to the client. There's some details on uh, this payload. For example, this is an ID of uh, payload. Next information is uh, O6 uh, PDU type uh, push messages. QF is the either length of payload. And then we have a B6 this is a content type application slash uh, WND WAP connectivity WBXML. Uh, this information uh, uh, will be uh, um, used by the mobile phone, uh, the receiver mobile phone, in order to understand that uh, this is a provisioning message. 91.18 is uh, the SEC parameter with uh, networking uh, uh, security mechanism. In this case, it is an IMSI retrieved by uh, the services uh, on web. Next, we have the MAC parameter, and the next 40 bytes is a, uh, our uh, MAC calculation. The transfer services uh, is not used in this process, and then uh, we skip it. Another layer is a transport services with uh, da um, wireless datagram protocol. And w, uh, WDP support is mandatory on any web compatible handset and can be mapped on uh, different bearer. WDP over GSM SMS is used to send the message. This is the third part of uh, our uh, provisioning message, the, the um, WDP header following by WSP header. And the last part is a WBXML uh, payload. Um, WDP over GSM SMS uh, header is defined using uh, UDH uh, headers, and uh, this uh, header uh, contains information for, uh, for example, port addressing and uh, concatenated short messages. This is a, an example. In this case, O5 uh, represents the application porting addressing scheme. OB84 is the destination port 2948 uh, for WAPUSH services. Double O is a uh, ID for uh, concatenated uh, SMS. 
uh, or to use uh, the total number of SMS, and uh, the last uh, information is uh, one ED of current SMS. The last layer involved in this process is uh, the bearer network on GSM SMS and the support binary data transfer with uh, an uncompressed 8-bit encoding scheme. A concatenated SMS is needed to send a payload larger than 140 bytes. Performed tests suggest that uh, no restrictions are imposed on sending SMS encapsulated provisioning messages. We have completed uh, our construction, uh, composed by four parts. This is a GSM SMS header. For example, we have a SMS submit uh, with uh, UDH header 41, uh, the receiver phone number length. The um, 91 is international format of our uh, number of a mobile phone. This is uh, the number. The encoding F5 uh, to specify the binary encoding, and uh, UDL is the length of uh, our uh, provisioning message. How we will send this, uh, the SMS? It's very simple to send uh, this forged provisioning message uh, by mobile phone attached to a PC. But uh, in this case, we have uh, two problems. The first one um, is uh, too expensive when a number of SMS increases. And the second one is uh, hard to hide the sender's identity. But services offered on web allow us to solve both uh, problems. This is an example how we can send the provisioning message uh, using the, the services of web. In this case, uh, we can specify the SMS uh, sender, uh, the phone number uh, for the of mobile phone. We can select the WSP header, WBXML payload, and specify as a SMS data field. After that, we can specify the UDH header the binary encoding, and now we are ready to send uh, this uh, message. So a um, small summary of uh, our construction. The provisioning document uh, can be easily created. WSP header is used in order to use a net 2 pin security mechanism with uh, IMSI in order to, uh, to perform the each mail calculation. Next, we have uh, the WDP support is mandatory on any WAP compatible handset. And finally, SMS with provisioning document are uh, typically unfiltered. Now, uh, this, is, this is a tool uh, that we use uh, in order to send uh, our provisioning message. Uh, we can select uh, the, 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 the web option for, uh, in order to send the, uh, the provisioning message uh, through uh, the web. We specify the auto-select configuration in order to, um, to select the correct um, configuration for mobile operator. We select uh, the list of number, uh, victims uh, number. Authentication option, specify the IMSI lookup. The configuration that we, uh, we want to send the, the mobile phone is the output. And next, this is an example uh, after this uh, configuration is installed on, uh, on mobile phones. We have two mobile phones with uh, a new network access point with uh, DeepSec uh, demo. Now I'll give you to Roberto that uh, will, co will continue the presentation. Thank you. Hello, I am Roberto Garcia from Mobile Security Lab. I'm going to show you the second part of the presentation that starts with the provisioning process. The provisioning process is the technical name of the auto configuration service. This is a service typically offered by most of mobile operators. For example, the service is available online. Have you ever seen something like this on your mobile operator site? And also, the, the service is performed automatically when uh, you insert a SIM in a new handset or a handset not configured. The operator will send a message to you. Now, in the first version of this attack, we have used the user pin provisioning in order to send the message to the victim. 
but um, and because uh, header backflow have experienced before the provisioning process, the provisioning framework provides two security mechanisms. And on these two security mechanisms, we have two security, two provisioning process. The first one is the user pin. The user pin is performed in four steps. First one, an info SMS carrying the user pin is sent to the user. In this message, the mobile operator advises the user of a new configuration message is arriving. After that, a provisioning document authenticated by the user pin is sent via SMS. But when the user opens the message, the user is requested to insert the, the correct user pin in order to install the configuration, and then the configuration is, is installed. So as you can see here, the user has to take note of the pin, and the user has to insert the pin. Now, in this version of this attack, we, have, we will use the network pin provisioning. The network pin provisioning can be performed in only three steps. First one, an info SMS is sent. This is only a generic message sent from the mobile operator. After that, a provisioning document authenticated by the network pin is sent via SMS, but this time, the, the user is not requested to insert the pin, but the new, the new configuration is automatically installed. And there are some handsets where the configuration is installed and after the user is advised of the new configuration. So as you can see here, the, the user interaction is minimum. And, main, and this is the first main aspect of this new attack. Now, what is the attack, the attack objective? The attack objective is hijack mobile data connection by reconfiguring the network settings of remote device. Okay. This can be performed in three steps. First one, identify the victim mobile operator. Because the, the new network settings, the new attacker network settings are, strict, are strictly related to the mobile operator. Because for each mobile operator, there are some parameters that if incorrect, the connection doesn't start. After that, we have to send the fake inf SMS in order to impersonate a new mobile operator provisioning process and Finally, we send the malicious provisioning SMS in order to install the attacker configuration settings as the default. After that, the attack objective is reached. So now, let's focus on these steps. First one, finding the victim's mobile operator. Because we have a problem. We usually, only, we usually know only the target number of the victim. But uh, with the number portability, it's not possible to find out the victim mobile operator only from the prefix of his number. But as have Roberto has explained before, we can use the IMSI lookup service in order to find the IMSI of the mobile number. And inside the, and inside the IMSI, we have the mobile country code and mobile dead network code that together, we, with, with this two values, we can uniquely identify the mobile operator and this way, we can retrieve the network settings everywhere. The settings are available online, or you can call the customer care. However, the, the settings are very easy to find. Second step, the info SMS. Usually, the, the, a user trusts the message, relying mostly on visual information. In details, the mobile operator service number. This is a number usually, usually used by the mobile operator for sending information messages to his customers, and the mobile operators that advises the user of a new configuration message is arriving. But, but as, as we know, the, the message could be easily spoofed, and for a customer, it's impossible, impossible to figure out if the message is real or spoofed. Final step, the provisioning, the malicious provisioning SMS. A provisioning, first of all, the provisioning SMS is not typically filtered. And during all of our tests, all the provisioning messages sent have been always correctly received. Then we have another issue, because when a message is received, the user interface displays little and confusing information. For example, the message source may be hidden or reported incorrectly. In the first image, the, the sender is not shown to the user. In the second, in the second example, the sender is generic sender. And also, few technical details on provisioning content 
are shown for the user. So when you receive this message and you want to, you want to accept the message, you can see the new configuration, the new uh, settings of, the, of this configuration. But oops, we can have a problem. The sender number, because there are a handset that can show you the, the sender of this message. It could be a problem, but as we have seen before, we can perform the provisioning SMS spoofing. So sending a binary SMS via web offers another interesting feature, the sender. So now we are also able to spoof the sender of the message. And for a victim, it's really hard to figure out if the new configuration is sent from the mobile operator or not. Now, we are just one step away, just, up way, just one step away from the attack objective that is to force all data connections to use the new malicious configuration. So when a message is received by the handset, there are several possibilities, depending on the handsets. First possibility, the new configuration is automatically installed as the default, and this is the perfect condition for an attacker. And also, when the message is received, the user is asked at installation time if the, if the configuration has to be installed as the default, and it's also a good situation for an attacker, but, Finally, the user is asked at connection, at each connection time, which configuration should be used for the connection. And this may be, this is the, the worst condition of an attacker. And the same in, in some cases, and mainly for customized handset by mobile operator, it may not be possible to change the default configuration. But for this, but the other handset customized by mobile operator, that when receiving the message, the default configuration is overwritten and impossible to remove. If a user wants to remove the new configuration, the user has to refresh the handset. So let's summarize the, uh, this attack. We start from the victim phone number. So first step, IMSI lookup in order to find the victim mobile operator network. And in this way, we can choose a correct provisioning message for the victim. As you can see, this step, can be performed automatically. Second step, send a fake info SMS. This step two is part of an automated attack. And finally, send the attacker provisioning SMS with the new network settings. This is also an, an, a step that can be performed automatically. So, as we can see, we can repeat each of these steps automatically. And if we think at this attack as a function, we can iterate this function for a list of, for a, with a list of number in order to execute a massive and automated attack. So now we are able to reconfigure the victim handset and let's move on on hijacking. In the first version of the attack, we have uh, chosen to reconfigure the victim handset with a, a, a new DNS server in order to perform a typical DNS subverting attack. But uh, this kind of attack, attack has several limitations. First one, DNS reconfiguration is not supported by several brands of mobile phone. And also, external DNS queries could be blocked by mobile operator. And finally, maybe the more important, that HTTP, HTTPS traffic doesn't go to the the, to the evil proxy that we used in the first version of this attack. So now we have chosen to reconfigure the victim, setting, the, the victim handset with the proxy. But as we know, a proxy configuration affects only HTTP and HTTPS traffic, but it bypasses DNS, DNS subverting limitation. Because first of all, proxy settings are supported by any phone equipped with an OMA provisioning client because normally a proxy is used for the MMS delivering. And also, proxified HTTP traffic is hard to identify. And finally, the direct HTTPS communication passes unnoticed through the proxy using the connect method. But now, what is an HTTPS stripping attack? This attack is a man in the middle attack presented by uh, Moximal Spike at Black Hat TC 2009. The, uh, this attack requires uh, hijacking traffic, and now we are able to, to hijack traffic, and diverting it toward the SSL strip tool. 
this tool is a man in a, is a man in a man in the middle proxy that performs this action. HTTPS links in clear text traffic are downgraded to HTTP. For each downgraded link, the proxy channels the HTTP request to the victim, from the victim to the real HTTPS one, and then return the answer in HTTP. But now, let's consider the possible effects of this attack in the, into, in the mobile world, because the attack could be even more effective in the mobile world, because, first of all, few technical details are shown for encrypted connections, only really tiny padlocks. And also, small and uncomfortable keyboard translated to typing an HTTPS address, but we usually, what we usually do is to use a, a search engine for finding the address, and this is a, a perfect because the traffic is in HTTP, and this is a perfect starting point for this kind of attack. And also, slow mobile connection, hide main the middle attack delays, and finally, SLS chip support supports proxy chaining. Now, let's look. A user wants to visit www.paypal.com. So the mobile browser tries to connect to the site, but the site will answer with the 301 error code requesting the, the victim browser to connect to the site using the HTTPS address. And then the client will connect to the site using HTTPS, so the encrypted connection. Now, let's, look, let's take a look at how SSL strip can be used in our attack infrastructure. The user wants to visit the site. Our every proxy intercepts the request, forward the request, the request to, a, to SSL strip, and SSL strip to the final site. After the when the, when the final set will reply with a 301 error code, the SSL strip tool downgrade the, the, the new location links to, from HTTPS to HTTP and return the answer to the proxy and the proxy to the client. So this time, the browser will try to reconnect to the site using the HTTP and encrypted channel and SSL strip will start his job. This is an uh, example of a provisioning document, pro proxy configuration provisioning document. In this provisioning document, there are three main parts. First one, used to define the proxy settings. The second one, used to force browser traffic through the evil proxy. And then the final one, the final one that allows it to work on many phones uh, equipped with an OMA provisioning process. Our evil proxy is based on Apache and Mod Proxy. We use the SSL strip as remote proxy for only HTTP connection, because for HTTPS connection, we have enabled the connect method. And finally, we use mod security audit feature for acquiring the traffic in Clartex. This is an example of what, we, what can be achieved with our attack infrastructure. And as you can see, the attacker is able to see, to see what the victim is browsing. At the same time, we are able to gather the username and password of the user. So now we are going to perform a, a live demo. Okay. Now um, I'm going to, to send a provisioning message. In this case, we choose a, a web uh, available uh, online. We select uh, automatic uh, configuration uh, using the IMSI information. We specify an info SMS uh, that will be uh, sent to, to the client. Specify a victim's uh, list number. Okay. And then we specify the authentication option and then uh, the IMSI lookup. So now we send this message. But send is disappearing. We have changed the resolution. Moment. Okay. 
Perfecto. ¿Está bien? The message is sent uh, first one the info SMS. The first message is arrived. The first message advised the user that uh, a configuration uh, will be arrived on a uh, mobile phone. The user then uh, received the provisioning message, but in this case, uh, um, the sender is a service provider. The user uh, will, will open the message, but this time, the uh, non party is ok the content of a message uh, advice that the configuration is for a new network access point now the user uh, installed the, the new configuration as default yes ok Now the configuration is installed when the, the, the user browsing, uh, all the traffic uh, will be passed uh, between our infrastructure. For example, now we are going to, to Google. We are connecting. Shows the, the configuration uh, before installed. And the configuration. It's this. Okay. It's normal. Yes. Okay. I will try. the browser or you open the browser okay with this handset we have a problem we can try with the other, the other one huh? Now we can start to see what is using, what is using this thing. For example, I want to I want to go to Twitter. I search for Twitter. We are intercepting the traffic, and the browser will see what the user is browsing. Then we go to Twitter. Sorry. We have the login page of Twitter, as you can see here, or as you can see, as you can see. Mm -hmm. One moment. Now we insert the username and password. Very long username and very long password.
now, we are going to the site. We have intercepted the password, the username and password, and now we are inside the, the Twitter space of the user. Okay. Now let's move on to final consideration. So what can be achieved with the, this kind of attack? But what, uh, the, we can achieve the same things of uh, a typical main the middle, main the middle proxy attack. So we can monitor and uh, perform monitoring and profiling user browsing, hijack browser session, steal application data, exude mobile operator data, mobile operator data, because now we are able to uh, get from uh, the, the network, from the operator, the network, uh, analyze and input inside the network, and, and finally, we are able to inject the data. The, let's focus on the issue of this attack, because the attack does not rely on the exploitation of a single vulnerability, but it uh, relies on the issues at the system level. And in details, uh, lack of provisioning message filtering, and also user interface uh, do not provide the sufficient level of details. And for the first version of this attack, mobile operator network allow use of external DNS servers. And after our presentation in the cut, uh, today all the DNS servers are, uh, are already uh, possible to reach from inside the network. And finally, HTTP traffic inspection is really carried out. So the possible countermeasures can be First of all, filter external provisioning messages on the network side. This is possibly the most effective, but it's really hard to perform. And also, perform filtering on handset side, but it may, it may be ineffective in case of sender spoofing. And also, another possible countermeasure is the user interface improvement in order to provide the proper detail level and warnings, but it may, sti it may still be ineffective in case of message spoofing. And, and also deny access to external DNS server, and this could make this, the first version of the attack more difficult, but there are, very, there are many operators that they use external DNS normally. And finally, perform content inspection on HTTP outgoing traffic. So thank you for all, and Thanks. now we are uh, ready for your question with the help of Alberto. <laughs> Okay, we have some minutes for questions. Other questions? Um, we heard in other uh, SMS talk earlier today, so um, is it really necessary to use this XML stuff or are there provisioning messages also that can be used without, uh, without the M IMSI authenticated yeah. stuff? You can use the provisioning message with, with the user pin, eh? with user pin, and, uh, but with the, with if for the network pin, you have only to use the IM side. Maybe this is the, the question is if we have to use only the IM side. Yeah. Yes. yes. No. Be, for the network pin, is required only the IM side. The, the user the IMSI. 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 Because the IM side initially was a, a, a value of the mobile operator only and only on the SIM. And so now, there so this security there are a lot model of has changed. There are, yeah. there are growing in the number of sites that uh, uh, offers this service. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this IMSI querying service? Is, I guess it's not really legal, right? To provide this service. The source code of the, the tool, eh? No, the, the, you query some service, right, where you give them a phone number and, and ask them for the IM, uh, IMZ. It's a VPS the IMZ phone. Uh, name, yes, so uh, no, no, but uh, I guess the service is not really legal, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, they're they're totally legal. Okay. A lot of uh, web, uh, okay. a lot of web services online uh, uh, provides if, these services. Eh? But if you try now on Google, I am saying look up, uh, okay. find uh, there are minimum two sites in, yes. <laughs> in the first hits. 
that you can use. Do they provide the information globally, or is it for globally. just for certain globally. countries? Globally. 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 Okay. They. What service do you use to spoof the SMS source address? Because I've tried doing that for numbers in North America, and it's not been easy. I mean, I've, I've worked with bulk S I mean, I've contacted a lot of bulk SMS providers, for example, to see what I can do to be able to control the, the originating address of text messages in North America. And they just, I couldn't get it. I mean, I got nowhere. So what service did you, what service are you using for sending your SMS? What what service are you ah, using for the, the the same that we have you that uh, the same service that we used for the IMC lookup because the service is only uh, this, they are sites that offer sending SMS via text via text level or sure. send the SMS via binary but binary using an uh, a basis and basic sixty four encoding. So yes, guys, encoding the. Um, VCD with 8-bit uh, eight, eight uh, compressed. Okay, you can so use uh, um, uh, both uh, text for info message and a binary message for uh, provision. Right, right. I understand. I was just asking what service you're using, if there were any restrictions on what, what world zones you could do that in. Because like I said, I've tried doing that in world zone 1 and not found anyone who would do it. Uh, the US carriers block the carriers. Okay, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, then there is time to see you at lunch or okay. outside. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.